What is happening everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're doing fuel. We got an entire, I'm about to knock my tank off. We got an entire fuel system we need to install for the FJ40. We got a fuel pump I'm doing in tank just because I feel like in tank is a lot more, a lot quieter and I have room, I, sh well, I should have room for it. We all know this build, everything kind of turns into not having enough room, but I'm hoping I have enough room for it because I already have the new pump and everything that sits inside the tank. We already have all that. I have a full uh, AN line kit, I guess you could say. It's got all the fittings, all the lines and everything in here. And uh, we got a fuel tank. Obviously, the bre this is a brand new fuel tank that was already in the 40 when I bought it. So we're gonna use this. This one sits under the passenger seat. You know, I've got a lot of comments asking why I'm still running the interior tank on this thing. For one, I don't have room under the back with the with the axle truss and the four link and everything it just comes up so high i only have a couple inches to the actual body i don't have room for a fuel tank back there plus when you have a properly set up and sealed and vented uh fuel tank that's under the seat there's really no downside to it i mean a fuel tank anywhere having fuel in a vehicle is obviously dangerous but there's not really any more dangerous having it inside the truck i don't think anyway at least from my research and honestly it might be a little bit safer because you're not smashing it off of rocks and everything when it's underneath the truck yeah you could put a skid plate and everything on it but i feel like under the seat it's gonna be nice and safe under there i mean these have these have been in rigs for 50 years if it was really that big of a problem you'd probably hear about it more often i mean shit happens every once in a while obviously but i feel like they're pretty safe anyway enough of the rant let's get to work i've already kind of got started on the fuel sender because i wanted to make sure that this has the right ohm reading for my auto meter instrument cluster that i have and turns out it's not the right one so let's check this out i'm going to show you how to test these for the ohm readings on them and then actually this is a pretty universal like flange or mounting pattern auto meter actually makes the correct one for the dash you can actually run a few different set like ohm readings or whatever you want to call it but Autometer has one that's compatible with the dash. So I'm just gonna buy that. But let's check this out real quick and then we gotta get the tank in the truck, get the seat in, make sure we got room on top. Um, I hope I'm smart enough to have left enough room on top of the tank, between the tank and the seat to where we can fit the fuel pump because it obviously sticks out of the top of the tank for the lines and everything. So let's do all that. Let's get this pump installed and run lines up. We got fittings for the back of the fuel rail it shouldn't be that bad of a job. It should be pretty easy, but let's get to it and see what we can come up with. All right, so you just hook up the red lead to the power terminal there, ground the case with the other black lead, and then throw it on your ohm setting right there. And then you'll just watch that ohm reading. You can see 125 about there, and then move that, you know, pull the flow up right there. And you can see it goes down to about 18, 17, so we're a 17 to one, why is that so much different now? There we go, 125, 128. You can see in here in the auto meter manual that came with my dash, you'll, it'll work for zero to 90, 240 to three, 33, 73 to 10. There's one that's close, there's 16 to 158 but I think that's off enough to where it's not gonna work very well. So like I said, Autometer makes one with the same mounting pattern. So I'm just gonna buy that and uh, it should bolt right in. Let's get the fuel tank in, find a spot to mount our, this is our, uh, basically the whole pickup here with the fuel pump there. It's got a baffle and everything. So we gotta mount that through the tank and hopefully, like I said, hopefully we got enough room for that fitting. That's sticking up about an inch. So hoping we got room. If not, we're gonna make some room.
success, guys. Obviously, where I wanted to put my tank, there was like a, a support in there, which took like an hour and a half to cut out just because you can't really get in here. So now we got a hole cut. There's no support there. We should be able to drop this in. And there's also a ring. A lot of people have tack weld it. So I don't, I'm gonna figure out if I wanna tack weld it or just kinda try to bolt it in. But there's a ring that goes underneath along with a gasket. And then obviously we gotta get the whole fuel pump and everything installed in this hanger. And then we can get this dropped in the tank. But that was a pain in the ass. I didn't realize that there was like a support that ran right through the middle of where the only spot that this pump is gonna fit is right there. But we got it out, I think it's still gonna work.
Well, we did it guys. We are completely done with this fuel system other than wiring. And then I'm just gonna run this vent. I'm gonna have to tie it in somehow to this uh, vent here, but that's where I wanna run that. Just right up there, I'll have to build something for that. But either way, we got these lines in. I did heat shrink these because it is fairly close to the seat. I mean, vibrations, it's gonna be moving a little bit. So that should help protect that. But what I did here, I thought was really cool. There's actually, it's like a square tube basically that runs along this whole, I mean, basically underneath there's a square tube. So that's what I used to cross over underneath the truck here. So I went inside of that and then it runs down underneath and on the driver's side here, let's crawl under here. And you can see it comes out right up there. There is that pinch weld right there. So I did cover that up with some of that protective sheath, but we got this thing mounted up all the way up here kind of on top of the frame rail actually it fit really nice up there so we got that run up and up to the engine fits really good if you guys are curious that right there is actually the fuel filter just a little inline fuel filter for this an line works out really slick it's up out of the way and actually those work pretty good so then lines come up obviously right up to the fuel rail i wanted to keep this return system you can go return less with a different i don't even know maybe you just cap the return off here but i figured i mean i like having a return line i feel like it's better to have a return line and then these fittings here i, I got this entire kit off of amazon these fittings came with for the the factory fuel line so it all works out really good one trick if you guys are curious looking for a clever way to kind of hang and mount these fuel lines i use these p clamps so these right here they're a 3 8 clamp but when i bought them it said they were supposed to fit the this an6 line but you can see quite a bit smaller so what i did is just took that rubber off and i just took two of these since i have two lines and you just go on either a line like that and stick a bolt through the center and run the lines right through there through a bolt it works out really good so we are good to go this pump actually is a walbro pump so it is a really good pump i want to talk about this tanks ink uh fuel pickup that thing works so good i did tack weld that ring in the bottom but everything fits so good really good quality all the stuff to mount the pump everything is so perfect with that it's i think it's going to work out awesome so i am just waiting for my uh, fuel level and we can get that in but other than that we are good to go on this fuel system well we are checking things off the list on what we got to do to get this thing running that's the goal i want to get this thing started soon it's been like over a year since i rebuilt this entire engine and i haven't even fired it yet so i'm a little anxious to start this thing up like always when you you know rebuild something but i'm very very excited so fuel we got we still got to do radiator hoses plumb everything in i mean power steering we still got a ton of other stuff to do but we're getting closer by the day. Well, anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Why don't you go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one.